Hey everyone, I'm Brian Brown doing. I'm here with Todd Anderson, and this is the deck tech for my mono green Eldrazi deck. Ooh. So basically, there are a lot of new cards that kind of push the idea of uh, these, like ramping into these giant Eldrazi. And uh, there's a little bit of nostalgia also for the mono green Eldrazi deck that used to exist last time Zendikar was around. Uh, nostalgia meaning I hated that deck. So <laughs> <laughs> Never played it, always lost to it. Like, but uh, you know, whatever. We'll we'll get over that. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, a lot of cool big Eldrazi. So I guess it's time to try to make it work again. All right, cool. Let's go for it. All right. So uh, the idea here is we're going to use Hedron Archive and From Beyond as ways to ramp into the big things. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that From Beyond is easily one of the best cards that we've seen so far in the set uh, because it's it's basically like Awakening Zone except it's <coughs> makes a 1-1 one, one instead of a 0-1. Yeah, I think people are really undervaluing the ability to just make a constant stream of 1-1s, one, especially against, like, control decks. Uh, you know, it can just be infinite chum blockers if you need to. It can also just trade off with, like, creatures out of mono red. Yeah, exactly. So I think that this card is actually really good, uh, and it's just going to sit there all game and generate an advantage for you. Uh, and then later in the game, you can also sacrifice it to search for an Eldrazi, you uh, can also sacrifice it to look for a nameless inversion. Ooh. <laughs> that is pretty... It doesn't say Eldrazi creature card. I noticed that just now. <laughs> nice. So you can also get a uh, crib swap. Yeah. Yeah, you can get a crib swap <laughs> off it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get some sweet things. So basically, like, this card is going to produce a bunch of 1-1s. We can use those 1-1s just as 1-1 creatures. We can use them also as a ways to ramp into big things. And then we can also... Uh, yeah, we can also just sacrifice it later on to get an Ulamog and take over the game with that. So it has a <laughs> lot of utility and it's really powerful. And then Hedron Archive is basically just two mana. It's a, it's a four mana artifact that produces two a turn. Uh, but the value here is that we can sacrifice it to draw two cards. So it's kind of like a double Mind Stone. Yeah. And one of the things that I like about this deck is we have uh, a lot of ramps. So we have... Four Rattleclaws, four Whisper of the Wilds, four Nissus Pilgrimage, four From Beyond, and four Hedron Archive. But all the majority of our ramp cards also provide other utility. So Hedron Archive can draw two cards to replace itself plus one. From Beyond is going to produce a steady stream of creatures can, and can get a big Eldrazi. Mm -hmm. And then we also have ten lands that do things. So we can sacrifice Foundry to get two 1-1 one, one Flyers, Spawning Bed to get three 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Spawn, uh, which I like the fact that you can actually, like, on turn five or six or whatever, just say go, end step, make three, spawn, untap. You actually have more mana the next turn than you had before. Yeah. Uh, and you can cast something like an Ulamog or a Void Winnow or an Ugin uh, to take over the game with that. Uh, and then we also have Sanctum of Ugin, too, where uh, when we play something that co a colorless spell that costs seven or more, we can sacrifice it and search for a colorless creature. And I like the fact that Hangerback Walker... Actually, if we pe play a hangerback for eight, uh, for a, like a four-four hangerback, we can actually sacrifice our sanctum to that, uh, and then go get like an ulamog or something. Yeah, it's definitely sweet. I I'm I think that like hangerback's kind of a weird card right now in standard because I feel like a lot of decks are trying to build around it, and uh, the ones that are the decks that are going to end up being great are the ones that like give the hangerback walker utility in some way. And in this deck, like it's a colorless creature. Uh, so it, like, doesn't die to your own Ugens. You know, it's a threat that is left over after that. You can make it so big so fast with just, like, Nissa's Pilgrimage, Hedron Archive, and uh, just create this, like, giant brick wall thing. But at the same time, it's, you know, a two-drop that you can, like, block an early creature with. So in this deck, it's, it's just great. And uh, I'm really looking forward to see, you know, just how good it is in this deck. Yeah, and one, one thing that's also pretty cool is... Uh, Basically, this deck is based around Ugin. Ugin is the big game changer here. That's like how we stabilize against decks uh, and how we how we win games. And the cool thing is that other than Whisperer of the Wilds and Rattleclaw Mystic, nothing dies to Ugin because even from Beyond, though, even though it costs green, it's actually devoid, so it has no color. Right. So if we Ugin in minus six, we get to keep our from Beyond um, and and all the Eldrazi spawn and things like that. And then Oblivion Sower too, uh, kind of is a bridge the gap card where it's going to come down on turn i don't know four to six and hopefully 
net us a couple of lands to ramp us into these bigger things. Uh, and then we have one Blight Herder, which I think Blight Herder, if you get to use the ability on Blight Herder, is one of the most powerful cards in the set. The issue is that it's hard to be able to consistently be able to set that up. So I only have one in the deck. Uh, Oblivion Sower is a good way to, to set that up, where you like play Oblivion Sower, you exile four of their cards, as long as, you know, probably two of them are non-lands at least, uh, and then next turn you can play Blight Herder and put them in their graveyard and get three one ones. Yeah, the cool thing about Blight Herder, which is going to come up a lot in this matchup, Brian actually pointed out, is that <clears throat> the ability that makes the one ones is actually trigger upon casting as opposed to resolution. So even if I counter it with a Silmgar Scorn or Scatter to the Winds or something, he's still going to get three spawn if I've cast a Dig Through Time or if he's got an Oblivion Sower that's already hit. Yeah, and that's actually a nice thing to note too is that uh, even though Counterspells still are really good against this deck, uh, a lot of the things are resilient to it. Sower works, uh, Oblivion Sower's on cast, Ulamog's on cast, and Blight Herder's on cast. So even if they counter your big payoff spell, you still get something out of it. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. So I'm interested to see how the deck plays out. Uh, it has a lot of ramp. It has a lot of mana sinks late in the game, and it has a lot of big things to do with the ramp. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it's, a, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. It took me it took me a long time to build this, so uh, hopefully it's not just <laughs> immediately into the waste basket. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically every deck I build pre like before a set comes out. So. Yeah, but uh, anyway, that's the main deck for the Eldrazi Green Ramp deck. Let's go ahead and look at the sideboard. All right, so our sideboard is 15 beautiful green cards. Um, basically, kind of a brute force sideboard. Uh, <laughs> like a first take sideboard where you don't exactly know what the format's going to be. But yeah. we just have like four Feed the Clan for aggro decks, three Guys Revenge for control decks, four Den Protector for grindier matchups. No, actually, we have two Den Protector for the control decks and then two, two. Den Protector for the <laughs> grindy decks. That's a good... Yeah, that is right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, Den Protector, I think, is... One of the things that I saw when I was building the deck that could be an issue is that... Um, like it's pretty easy for them to just exile Ulamog or whatever, or uh, just kill your big things like ruinous path your Ugans or just kill them. And there's like not really any way to like get them back or whatever, except just drawing more. So yeah. I think Den Protector could be pretty good in that regard. A couple Inox survivalists because there are actually a lot of powerful enchantments and artifacts from the set. Uh, mostly just enchantments. I guess there's a lot of colorless cards that aren't artifacts. But sure. Uh, there's a lot of really good enchantments from the set, so I think that he might be a good inclusion. Maybe it's better to play just actual naturalized because of Den Protector, but uh, I wanted to go with a slightly slower but more powerful card. Yeah, I mean, most of the enchantments that are going to be problematic are not exactly cheap, or even if they are cheap, they don't really gain a ton of value until the game goes like pretty long. Yeah. And, you know, if you're able to just like morph and flip up the survivalist on five, I think that's usually good enough. We'll and then a couple of windstorms, which actually, as weird as it sounds, I think are mostly for like Hangerback Walker, which I, <laughs> I know that sounds really silly, but uh, opposing Hangerbacks are actually really good against the deck because we don't have a way to sweep the tokens. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's kind of uh, might be kind of awkward to beat that card sometimes because Ugin can't handle it. But sure, and that's our game pl and Ugin's our game plan. But anyway, that is the uh, deck and sideboard with Eldrazi Green Ramp. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for the video where I play against Esper Dragons and see if uh, I'm gonna get whooped. Blight Herder can herd some blight, as it were. I'm gonna get whooped.